There once was a man named Gold Roger who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before they hung him from the gallows, these were the final words he said. Our perspective is yours for the taking, but you'll have to join us first. We left everything we debated at the Yonko table. Ever since, pirates from all over the world set sail for the Grand Line, searching for the Yonko table, the table that will make their dreams come true. Yo! Ya yo, ya yo, everyone. The Yonko table is back in session yet again. I understand, folks, we've been at the table, like, chowing down on so much content this week, but we're doing it for you guys because we know it's the holiday season. You, you're going on long commutes, long trips, and you want content to listen to along the way. And we're trying to cover every bit of entertainment as possible. So we hope you're enjoying it. We hope you're giving us a listen because this time at the Yonko table, we're here to talk about one of the greatest animes ever created. One of the greatest mangas ever, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, specifically Jojo's Bizarre Adventure part six, Stone Ocean recently dropped on uh, Netflix about two to three-ish weeks ago. I think, I think like two weeks ago, two weeks ago. And um, uh, first 12 episodes dropped, a, a bit of a change for JoJo, but I think everyone here is is a, a major JoJo fan. We, we ate this up as quickly as we could, and we're here to talk about it, what we think about the, you know, the new characters, the plot, what, what, how the anime adapted the manga, and so on. So, uh, before we dive deep, with me as always is fellow supernova Nino. Nino, I, I, I get the feeling you're a major JoJo fan. Just a hint. Just a hint. I right? am. I love JoJo, and I'm I'm excited. I'm here to eat. We've been eating good this week. I'm here. <laughs> we have. There's been so much. We're trying to get everything, and jo JoJo's up on the plate, and I I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, and with me as well is fellow supernova Toasty. Toasty, I see your background. Is that is that like a a nod to what your favorite JoJo part? What's what's going on back there? You're, you're a Stardust Crusader Stan. Nah, it's only my second favorite part. My favorite part is actually part two with Jonathan and the Pillar mm. Man, but I couldn't find a good picture uh, for that. But I decided to stick with this picture because it was amazing. But yeah, I'm excited about JoJo. Right, right. No, I, I, I agree. Um, at some point in the future, we are going to do, a, you know, a, a, a ranking list of the JoJo parts for sure. And, and hopefully we get everyone at the table that's into JoJo participating uh, in that as well. But um, yeah, uh, JoJo part six, like just overall thoughts, like, you know, they they structure this a little bit differently in terms of adapting the anime. Um, they drop the first 12 episodes all at once on Netflix, as opposed to how they used to do the previous parts where it was weekly, right? So the episode will come out, you would wait till like, I think like the Friday or Thursday of every week, and you would watch the episode for, I don't know, 30 plus weeks, depending on how many episodes uh, or chapters they were adapting. Um, but I guess since we only have the first 12 episodes and we have to wait, I don't know, four to six months, maybe? I, I don't know what the wait time is for the next part, but since the part is not finished yet as of the time of this recording so you could just call this your uh stone ocean part one review what do you guys think right now in terms of just in general thoughts like you know the characters where the story's going i'm gonna put that on the table because i i got my own thoughts but i i do want to hear what you guys have to say um i have to say that it was enjoyable it was definitely good there's some part that were slow there were some episodes I didn't like, but overall, it was still a good experience, and it was slightly better than uh, the previous season with Jorno, especially the first 12 episodes. Uh, that one was way slower than this episode, so that's their W, at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Um, I think this is probably one of the better parts of JoJo. Like, the, this really felt like it was just firing on all cylinders, and doing Stone Ocean, you know, the credit that is due. Um, overall, they there was, uh, and I, this is coming from, I, I read the part six, the manga, and there was a lot of times where it would kind of elongate, um, you know, moments that they kind of just like packaged perfectly. Like they didn't rush through anything or, and the stuff that they did uh, rush through was like things that needed to be rushed through. So it, it really was refreshing to see this kind of like, um perfect pacing for jojo 
especially since Jojo kind of has a pacing problems at certain points. But in I, the I manga or in the time. anime too? In, 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 the, in the manga and I think in the anime, like, um, and it happened like with older parts as well. Like part one and part two were like just one season right. and they like flew through them. Um, especially with that, you know, I'm thinking of like that final fight with Dio in part one where they're like pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, the sword has fire and haha, and now my fists are, fi-. you know, there's a lot of fights that, you know, are just either very quick or they rush through parts where they didn't need to rush through. Um, but this just felt like a perfect execution of, you know, part one. For part one of, of Stone Ocean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Part one of Stone Ocean. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, yeah, I, I agree. I, I uh, you know, I've I've always watched the JoJo's for the most part since like part three when they came out. So like part three was already over when I started watching JoJo. Um, and part four I watched when it came out. Part five, it took me three years to finish part five. Um, but so I, I recently finished part five. And, and I, I liked part five but then as i looked back on the series I, I, part five specifically um i had a lot of problems with it and i can see like some of it is with the main character some of it's with the squad some of it's with uh just the way they told the story because i i could tell in part five they kind of wanted to recapture what they did in part three which you can mm. argue is for the most part, their most popular part, Stardust Crusaders with, with Jotaro, because that's the one that introduced Stans. Dio was the main villain again. Um, it was a trek across the world, you know, through Egypt and stuff like that. Part five, I think, was trying to capture that. And I think it captured some elements, but it it didn't at the end of the day. Mm. Um, but part six, part six ditches all of that. I And I like it. It's, it's secluded into just one area, which is, a bit of a change for Jojo because I think the closest they've ever gotten to being so secluded into one area was um, part, part four. four, part four, yeah. right? It, it, it took place all in Morio City. Um, but this time it's just in, in the prison. What was it? Green Dolphin? Green Dolphin? Prison? Green Dolphin Penitentiary. Yeah. Penitentiary. And it's, uh, it, but it works and it's weird because uh, and Nino maybe you can attest to this since you've read the manga and I, I I me and Toasty haven't read the manga we just watched the anime because the anime is just so good it um, is. but <laughs> uh, but like I've I, and I've mentioned it before in our group chats um you know I've always heard not mostly negative things but like part six seems to be this um this weird part in Jojo where I don't, at least the times that I would read in like forums and discussions, people wouldn't talk fondly of it. And I never knew what the reason was. Is it because it's the main character? Is is it cause she's female? Is it because it, it's just so different? Like, like now that you're seeing the adaptation, like, do you think the anime has improved in that regard? Like from the manga or like, what's the deal with that? I really do think that the the anime is like, just, and as always, the anime has a way of improving the manga because the manga is really good. Um, it's really good on its own, but it's also good conceptually. And sometimes it doesn't, especially with part five, like that part five is like a really big aggressor where it's like the manga is just sometimes almost, especially with the English translations, it gets really bogged down by the high concept nature of like what's going on especially <laughs> there was a big problem with the plane that never got resolved in the manga um oh wait but, the plane they were flying in so to- yeah it was just it was it it was really confusing reading that part like it was like okay are they out are they not out what's going on you know right um but in part six i do think like um uh, because there was a big shift in like jojo's like fan base like recently since it's become more easily accessible because of the anime where a lot of like you know queer people and a lot of more people that are friendly to women have co-opted this series so stone ocean i think is going to be remembered as one of the like the really the better parts once we get down to it because there's some there's some wild shit that happens in the manga and it's it's and i can't i can't spoil and i won't spoil but I never got the hate around it and i do think it's it comes from like um the you know the original fans of jojo um i'm not saying all fans but there was a uh you know like maybe like 10 percent of a very vocal 
part of the base that were just very misogynistic. And they were like, yeah, you know, Chad Jotaro doesn't Where's care about Giga Chad, <laughs> Giga Chad Sigma Jotaro doesn't care about women. And he tells bitches to shut the fuck up, even when they're their mom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's right. He did that in part. Three. <laughs> and it just it, I think people were just like upset that, you know, that there was such a shift because uh, I think after part four, the the designs be started becoming more feminine more slender more sleeker and more focused on like fashion what they're wearing what how they're moving and you know the poses have always been a thing in jojo but i think it really got um it really changed how you know our percept or the perception from you know iraqi's original uh intent um, because before it was like these big buff men fighting with these big yeah. other buff men doing things. But I, I really don't, I never got the hate. I never got the hate because when I read Stone Ocean, I think it was probably one of the better parts, like just reading it. But it also has the unfortunate, um, the unfortunate uh, circumstance of coming before probably arguably the best part in the manga. And I've probably heard the of best that. Part, part of seven. JoJo. Yeah. Um, I've, and I've I heard think... many people compare that. I've I've seen the word thrown around. They consider it um, Araki, the authors. Uh, they considered that his magnum opus in yep. JoJo. I, I've heard it. I've heard it. I'm like, really? Is it really that good? And people <laughs> yeah, keep and, saying it. And, yeah. It just imagine imagine like the all the energy and the possibility of part one, but with part six. You know battle styles and like stands that that's how you know what i mean like yeah it, 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 he, he's taken everything but he got a fresh start um because he was like oh, other universe but right. ultimately ulti uh, you know ultimately people were just i didn't i don't think people were ready for this because part six is really the ending of this first chunk of jojo it really is right Right. I, I, I've gotten that feeling from it, especially just how much closer you get to present day, because I think this is in like 2011, I think the mm -hmm. time frame is. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I I love the main character. I was expecting to hate her just, you know, from what I've heard before, I was uh, or maybe not hate her, just like uh, be indifferent because I, I finished part five recently. I'm fresh off of Giorno. Giorno is a badass, but like he really was one note for the most part throughout the entire series he like he, he, he's a good person yeah he's he's great he's kind-hearted but he didn't really have a range of emotions uh to express and again i think that's going back to part three trying to mimic what jotaro was jotaro was a one-note character he was a badass he was a giga chad a misogynistic giga chad <laughs> <laughs> and um and 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 I think the author, he after doing part four, which was more grounded in terms of like story, he was like, okay, the fans maybe probably want a globe trotting type of deal again, uh, but this time just in Italy. But let me let me do that with with part five. But part six, I mean, let's just go into it. Uh, uh, Jolene Cujo, she's the new JoJo, right? She's uh, front and center. She is the daughter of Giga Chad Jotaro Cujo, <laughs> and I can. I could tell you now, I mean, I, I'd rather wait until the series uh, part six is over to really decide where I want to put her in terms of JoJo characters. She is she's up there among the best because I think she has she feels like a real person. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, again, with, with, with like episode one, I was expecting her to be like some like just a carbon copy of, of, of Jotaro because it's Jotaro's jo daughter. It's, it's a shonen style manga. And I, I, that's what I expected, but um, she comes in and and she's she's like a normal like what 18, 17 year old girl growing up. She has emotions, she experiences love, and she's not just this giga chad badass. <laughs> and it's it's such a shame like her going through, you know, the the prison system and seeing her change as a character because in episode one she's a baby she, she's a little bit of a baby but an understandable one because i mean who who wouldn't in those scenarios you got you, you're you're framed uh you, well no you're what was it she took the fall for her bf mm -hmm, yeah. in that car accident 
Um, she took a plea deal, which she thought was going to, you know, reduce her sentence. <laughs> no, it did not. <laughs> it increased it. And, and she's thrown in a very abusive prison sy system where she's uh, dehumanized by the, the guards in the prison. She's bullied by her cellmates, which we'll, we'll get into. Uh, what's her name? Gwes. <laughs> Glorious Gwes. Um, but then she takes those experiences and she grows from it and becomes this what what's the giga chat equivalent for a, a, a badass be a giga um chat up. giga I chat, chat up. Up. fine <laughs> <laughs> she, she 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 becomes an alpha and omega in her own right and it felt realistic in a way i i liked it i liked that part of her character because you know some people would say jolene's a cry baby and she cries throughout the entire series. She she's a very weak person. I did not get that. I did not get in no. the first twelve episodes, which from what I understand is like fifty ish chapters of part six. I did not get that she was a crybaby. She's a badass. I don't know yeah. what what do you guys think about her? Like you know, just being introduced episode one. I think it's just the reason people were calling her crybaby is because she showed way more emotions than the other JoJo characters. The other JoJo character never cried. They just kind of took the hit. But for her, because she was crying early on, it made her seem whiny. And I'm mm. assuming if you were a mega reader back in the day, that's what they were complaining about. For mm. us, we're watching the episode like, okay, she cried for two minutes. And the first couple of episodes, it's not a big deal to us. But I'm assuming people that read it, for them, that was a couple months of her crying. Mm. So that's probably why it's getting to them crying. It's not that she's a crybaby. It's just that... We have to remember the manga readers had to deal with this for too long. We watched 12 episodes in what, two days, two to three days, 50 chapters. That's a year. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. year. No, that's an yeah. entire year of her. Like, and you have to remember, like she cried for the first couple episodes. So that could be like the first three to four months of you reading. You constantly see her crying. Like my dude, what is going on with it's this? It's your Why first impression crying? of the character. That's yeah. why. And we but it, all know that you judge a manga based on the first 10 to 20 chapters. So for them, first 20 chapters are constantly whining and crying. They probably dropped it and say, screw it. This is not Jojo. The Jojos are supposed to be badasses. They go head on into a challenge. They don't, they don't care. They don't cry. They don't back down. Mm. She backed yeah. down. But, but, you know, I think that that gives, I think Araki was really trying to give Jolene an actual arc because throughout the season and i think i think one of her most defining moments is when her father gets what do you call it his per, like his soul and his stand taken and she's just like i have the ability to like run away and then she's just like at that point she's like i've done too much i'm in this no matter what they won't stop going after me and i have to figure out what's going on and i think that was one of the most defining moments of the the character you know what i mean like i really think right. he took a risk and a gamble um and uh with you know with with giving her an actual arc and i think it, i really do think it really pays off in the end because you get to see jolene like really like grow like i i think i don't think that the jolene at the beginning could have survived like the anti-gravity stuff near the end oh, no. and make those make yeah. those calls but I, I love that. I love like seeing that journey that Jolene has to go through. And I think and I think it also tells a lot about the, you know, this the prison system itself. Like he was really trying, Araki was really trying to like say something about society, which, you know, it's it's always appreciated. But it also like shows that in this system, like people have to resort to like complete, you know, like dog eat dog just to survive. And like it's not meant to be survived by normal people, so right. it's 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 just a lot. It's a lot that I think he did well I, in composing the thing. Right, and I I think it was when you because looking back on it, I didn't even think that this was a thing. But now looking back, I'm like, wait, yeah, this is something new. This is the first time that the main character has really discovered what a stand ability is. Because in parts three, four, and five, we get introduced to the main character and either they just recently discovered their stand or they've been using it for a while. And even if they just recently discovered it, they already know what to do with it. 
it's like oh okay mm -hmm. yeah this thing punches great fantastic <laughs> <laughs> um and but i think it was really nice how you know what, what happens jotaro sends that little stag beetle looking medallion thing and it functions yeah. the same way as the the arrows the stand arrows and um jolene pricks her finger on it and she starts getting these weird powers and she doesn't know what's going on she she's like what is this i, I could see you know launch strings from my hands i love her stand by the way stand stone free i, I yeah. love that um and uh, I think it was pretty cool to see. I think for the first two to three episodes, it was her trying to learn like what her, first off that she even had a stand and then how to even use it. Like what were its abilities? You didn't really get that in the first, uh, you know, I guess part three, four and five. Part five, Giorno, he already knows what a stand does. And <laughs> I don't even think Araki really knew what a stand did because it just, it just did so much. And throughout the series, it just did so many new things. I'm like, dude, I, I already lost. I'm lost in the sauce with these powers. Um, but then in part four, Josuke, he already knew what his powers were. Jotaro, he he discovered them kind of, but at the same time, he's like, oh, it's it's like a extension of myself. Okay. It's because everybody else before her, they acted like geniuses. They were geniuses in a way. They, mm. they need what they do for her. She's almost like an idiot. So for her, she doesn't, she didn't rationalize it the way the other character did, which made her more human in a way. Yeah. But I, I also, I, I also think that like Jolene, you know, that it, he was showing a different kind of genius because you never see, you never saw like someone having to work out not only what your stand did, but also how the other stand work and then be able to turn it around. I think like, I think a great example of this was when she was fighting her cellmate and, oh bless and, and yeah and then she was just like she kept shrinking and then like she just had to find like the perfect place to like shove her in and then beat the shit out of her <laughs> no it was it was glor whenever jolene got the one up on any of the her her fights it was i mean she, she she's her she's her daughter's uh her dad's daughter she's her dad's daughter and she has that ora ora, you know, in her, and <laughs> she goes in with the ten thousand punches. I'm telling you, it, there's something about those scenes in JoJo. It, regardless of the character, it always hits me. I'm like, dude, this is why I watch JoJo. Dude, this is why I okay. love this show. Um, but coming from Jolene, you know, she was a bit of a crybaby in the beginning, but then seeing her pull off an ora like her dad, who is a misogynistic uh, Giga Chad, I was a fan for. Her. I'm like, let's go, girl, let's go. <laughs> And, um, but I, I do agree with, um, what Nino was saying earlier about, um, you know, her interactions with her father, because for the first, uh, four to five ish episodes, Jolene hated her father. She, yeah. she was not a big fan. And I guess in a way it, it kind of fits Jotaro, I guess, cause I never saw him as like a fatherly type of figure, but I, I don't know why I expected him to be. Cause it's like, oh, you know, you're the. You've been the protagonist for so long and so many JoJo parts. Like I, you have to be a good dad, right? And he wasn't apparently. He was. He was just never there. And um, and 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 you can see that in like flashbacks with Jolene, where she's a, uh, um, she's remembering like when she's you know got arrested a couple times and um, Jotaro was never there to you know console her or anything. And uh, but. I thought those were great scenes where um, we start getting more and more as to why she's in there. Like, what, what's the mystery as to why Jolene is in here, right? And what characters are trying to keep her there and what are they using her for? So um, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was, um, I think, uh, Jongali A. I think his name was Jongali <laughs> A. <laughs> he was uh which again i think this may be why i like parts i'm like i'm really liking part six yeah. i like the parts that in that um weave in elements that have been, been been going on since like parts one two and three um and but obviously part four is still really good i, I really like part four um but in part six you get scenes where uh, it's it's like it's like a character jongali a he's a a remnant of of the the past from dio right and i think that's so cool because we aside from giorno in part five i'm like dude is this gonna mention dio in any other way like is this gonna go anywhere <laughs> with the past plots or whatever it doesn't mm -hmm. but i'm like dude this is so cool so this is like a 
like a like a, some servant or maybe a, a former lover that was you know with Dio back then, and <clears throat> he uh, he he just wants revenge. He's like, dude, I I hate Jotaro Kujo. He ruined, uh, he killed Dio, and he took my everything from me. And um, but then obviously the plot gets more complex. But like, what did you what were you guys thinking up until this point? Because I think it's Jotaro trying to come into the prison, trying to break Jolene out. I would say this is maybe like the first like arc of of the part one out of it's the first arc of part six is part one yeah. <laughs> leading up to you know what happens with Joel Totoro getting his memory and Stan taken away so so what did you guys think up until now because there was a lot of stuff that happened you had the fight with her cellmate um uh and and the fight with John Gali a the sniper like what were you guys thinking about in this like first segment of, of the of the first half of part six part one <laughs> i think i i remember that uh you know when i was first reading through it i was like oh my god you know it just felt like things kept the rug cutting the rug kept getting pulled out from under me um and like they handled it so much better in in, in the in the anime like it really felt like there were you know what I, if you were keen in observing things you're gonna be like hmm something doesn't sit right you know there's a difference between reading it three chapters ago and then seeing it three minutes ago there's a huge difference because oh, what do you call it right. um sometimes when you read you're like what 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 just happened especially when you're like when the art is so like it draws you in um but there was just so much happening uh i, I think and uh, from that first part and then when you find out that the the second villain gets revealed that you know it was just like oh there's other things at work here it's not just this and you're like oh and then and then um what do you call it that that moment with jolene's genius idea she was like i'm not gonna escape because the stand went back in the prison so i have to be here i was like oh shit it was she very defining. yeah i i love yeah. that because because up like right before that you know she I really love that episode because there's that scene where like she trips, right? Mm. And she falls on the ground <laughs> and she's expecting good old daddy Cujo to come in and be like, oh, Jolene, are you okay? He just walked his... off. <laughs> he just... No, he was like, oh, Jolene, uh, you dropped this. You, you dropped the, the beetle. Don't, don't drop it. Don't lose it. And she's like, this, this <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's not asking me if I'm okay or anything. And but like it culminates, you know, in that fight with uh Jongali A, where um, you know, uh Jotaro reveals through that fight, he's like, No, like Jolene, I actually do like really care about you. I want you, I, I want you to survive this, you know, and and he was willing to risk it. I mean, they they've done a lot with Jotaro's star platinum the last like couple um parts where I feel like Araki realized what monster he created by having a stand that can control time and stop time. Because it's like, <laughs> you can stop time, you know, what, what, how, how are you going to, you know, defeat that? But then I think starting with part four, where a rat almost killed <laughs> Jotaro <laughs> with a, a rat with a stand, I'm like, okay, I think he's really trying to steer away from Jotaro being the buy all end all with terms of like stand powers um and 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 we kind of see that here you know he's he, he's stopping time a little bit but it's, it's really not enough you know it's 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 um I feel like the story has progressed to a point where the powers are not as simple as they were in part three where mm -hmm. it's kind of like one note yeah. with the abilities I can stop time oh I can um summon fire uh i i have a sword <laughs> um but uh but yeah like now it, it's 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 over with that so i i like how iraqi was able to kind of nerf jotaro in a way but at the same time still make him a badass in certain scenes and whatever um but yeah uh he gets his memory and stan taken away jolene has that moment where she's about to run away uh, to the Speedwagon Foundation. She's right there. She can literally leave. That's the thing. Yeah. She's been through so much up until now. A terrible prison sentence, like beatings out the wazoo in the in the prison system. And she see, honestly, it kind of hurt me a little bit when you she turned around 
and she saw her dad like in like his face was in a puddle of water yeah and it's just... like the dead body yeah yeah it just it just hit because it was like a like a little moment i'm like oh my god dude this better not be how joe thought it goes out dude because this is hurting me yeah. and she decides no i'm not running away i'm going back in here i'm gonna find the bastard that did this to my dad and and i, I don't know I, I think that was a perfect they they could have honestly ended this first part right here and i would have been uh satisfied but i'm glad they didn't i'm glad they mm -hmm. didn't um but uh but yeah i like how now it's more of a plot to you know save jotaro it's it, it's a character that we've known for years and years and years and it just makes it more of a um, uh i guess an intricate plot like now i'm more invested because like it, like in part five I, I know i keep going back to part five but i recently finished part five and, and i like part five but i had problems with it you know it the whole goal was let's defeat the head of the 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 mafia the um yeah the, the, head, the crime family yeah the yeah. crime family yeah. yeah and 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 that plot is fine by itself but when you have something where i care about like a character that's been with us for so long and now the plot is centered on saving that person you got me invested i, I don't know it's, it's more an invested plot and then when you mention previous characters from the past even better mm -hmm. even better and you know i think i don't want to i don't want to give away too much but there are if you're still looking for that that like high stakes like end of the world kind of plot it'll get there but there's just so much you know this uh, this really is like when i when i when i mentioned before um like just casually that like part six really is like the ending is probably one of the better endings in jojo just because it was it's completely high concept and out there like this high concept i think puts part five to shame oh, even wow. with emperor crimson but it's <laughs> it's there's a lot of shenanigans going on and then it, it, um near the end which i think it i think this paced it out beautifully because right now when you're just watching it you're like oh you know um it's a very personal story and then things just kept getting adding on adding on adding on to it um and it's it's really it's really a testament like i think other ones were just like oh how are they gonna like overcome this no this one is just really how are we going to survive this how are we going to survive this so that we can see another day to fight and i really like that aspect of of this part no for for sure um i i think what i think what helps that even more are the side characters like the, the squad for jolene i know we've been going on for a bit and we haven't even mentioned that her squad uh but i i like how condensed it is because like i think um it reminds me a lot of part four where part where part five uh, i'm sorry uh part three you had what you had um jotaro avdol uh polnareff and joseph and kakyoin that's like five ish yeah that's five characters that's a lot to balance um and then in part five you have uh you know the entire mafia squad bucciati um yeah. oh you forgot the dog oh iggy iggy you know you're right, you're right. <laughs> that's iggy. right six oh. six Iggy, I I gotta put respect on Iggy. I think because Iggy gets introduced so later on, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, Iggy. Iggy. He has one of the most important parts in part three. He does. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So Iggy, Iggy's rounding off the the squad with six members. Um, and then in part five, you have the you know Giorno and the entire Bucciati squad. But in part four, they they condense that number, and it, it's it's just mainly um it's it's Josuke, Kakyoin. I'm and I'm sorry, not 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 Kakyoin, um ok, ok, Okyasu, Okyasu, and uh Koichi. It's those yeah. three. They're the trio. There's obviously other, and I guess Shigechi, who has his moment <laughs> in the series, but um they all are it's a small group of characters, but I I like those characters more when it's a smaller group. Mm -hmm. Um, similar to part two, where it's just Joseph and uh Caesar, Caesar is a Pelly part six is doing it again and i'm liking the characters already we have um uh her name is Hermes. 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 yeah she gave off Hermes a Castello. i she gave up a, a completely different vibe when we when when i was first introduced to her i thought she was going to be that bully that antagonistic to jolene because she was being a little too nice to her in the beginning and yeah. i'm like oh i already know where this is going she's gonna 
win her trust. She's gonna, you know, steal from her or betray her. Have her in then, the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and then they're gonna learn that they have to survive together. But no, she was, she was actually trying to help uh, Jolene, and I, I like that because it. Uh, Rocky threw me through a loop. I didn't, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, Ermes is great. She's, she's a, a, a bit of a gambler in, in a way. She likes uh, betting for high stakes, but for good reason. She knows how the prison system works. She's familiar with it, and she she wants she sees Jolene, this newbie, getting thrown in here. She's like, this, this girl's not gonna survive. Like, a yeah. second, it, it, she's yeah. not, she's not, and and she she tries to help her, saying, listen, you gotta have money going in this. If you don't have any money, <laughs> they're gonna screw you over big time. Um, but I, I like Ermy's. I like her stand ability. Her stand ability is one of the more interesting ones. But but, but like, what what do you guys think of of just Ermes right now? Um, do you want more of her? Do you, do you need to see more of her before you like make a decision? I want to see more of her. I feel like she, even though she had her little moments in the series so far, we didn't really see her stand do anything major. And I'm waiting for that because she has the power to copy everything, multiply. As far as we know, it's only two copies right now, but. I could see it being something crazy later. Like she throws like a nail at somebody and she makes it rain like a million nails at them. We don't know like the limit of her power, which is something I want to see. So, so far in the part one of part six, I'm indifferent because she hasn't had enough action. And that's one of my major criticism of part one of part six is that the side character haven't really shown what they can do. Yes, they have a couple fights, but the main I guess attention has been on Jolene and I want the other characters to get their moment because I feel like they could do something cool really also, but mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for part yeah. two. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I really like um, Hermes. Um, I think they really did her justice from the manga. Like I really, I really like the direction that they're going with, you know, with her. Um, and I think, I think, yeah, I think that it, I think as the, the the second part comes, there's going to be more opportunity for these side characters to get, um, you know, for the squad to really like have their own moments. Um, because and and uh, of course the, it, the the limitation is also like the setting that they're in. Because like if especially with that last part of um, of part one, they when uh, Jolene had to go to the the courtyard in right. between the the men prison and the the woman prison like you know she couldn't bring the other two with her because that'd be really suspicious right so like you know they, then other characters got added which don't say much but they do a lot so it's just it, it's just i think i think as the series goes on it, they'll get a lot more to do and I, i'm excited to see that right and i mean i'm i'm kind of with you guys on that too where um I'm I'm a fan of what they've done so far. I just want to see more of it, right? Because um, Ermi's Ermi's kind of got I think two ish episodes at least just for her. Uh, the main one I mainly remember is the janitor one where she fought McQueen. That was the guy that uh, mm. kept trying to harm himself, and uh, he was very self centered about the reasons why he was trying to self harm. Um, but well, I, I mean, it was beyond self harm. He was trying to commit suicide. Right, <laughs> like, he, like he was, he was trying to commit suicide, and and uh, how do you call it, Jolie, uh, um, Ermi, like he had this like weird obsession with Ermi's, where it's like, oh, like you know, you care about me so much about not committing suicide, I'll die happy now knowing that someone as beautiful as you cared about psychopath. me. He's a psychopath. Yes. He's a, he's a psychopath. Is, I mean, I, I I want more episodes like that where it's just the side character. And they're in their own shit, so to speak. They're, Jolene's not there. They're doing off. They're doing their own thing somewhere, and they just have to handle their own business. Um, yeah. Ermy's Ermy's is great. I I I love Ermy. She's she's basically the um, uh, I guess the Okiasu. I I really like Okiasu from from JoJo uh, mm. Part Four with, with Josuke. So she 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 seems like the Okiasu of the group, and I I love her. Um, but we also got another character in her squad, um, Foo Fighters, mm -hmm. right? Foo Fighters. Um, th I think she's really hilarious, her conception, like how she came about. Because 
um, uh, what happened? Jolene is trying to find a disc for uh, her dad, the stand in the memory. That leads them to going outside of the prison for like a search party to, you know, find dead bodies and whatnot. And they encounter basically a stand, which is interesting because it, it's it's a stand that's sentient. It's not tied yeah. to any body, which is well, cool. Well, right? Or no, no. The the whole idea of Foo Fighters is that it, it's like literally the algae, the plankton. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. That are the plankton and they the stand and the 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 user were fused okay so so they're one they're kind of one being right right uh, no that, that's right um they they were they're, they're definitely a unique take on stand i wasn't expecting something like that uh in yeah. jojo because th that's the cool thing about jojo just when you think you understand everything in the lore and what's allowed <laughs> araki <laughs> throws <laughs> this <laughs> in there yeah. i'm like oh, okay fine I i'll take it sure um, but, uh, but yeah, so there's this, it's funny. Cause I saw this character when they're in the search party, uh, Foo Fight, the, I guess the, the girl's name was a tro. Um, I think that was her name, a tro. Um, she dies, right. She's like one of the first people that dies when they go out into the marshes. And I'm like, I saw her in the opening. Isn't she one of the characters? <laughs> is, this, is this like a stand ability that she can die? And, and no, it's, it's literally. You know, Jolene befriends this this plant, which I thought, oh my God, I thought this was genius. I loved how they handled this. Jolene is just not someone to go in there like her dad and just beat the ever loving shit out of the person that is trying <laughs> to fight her. She, she she does that. She she does that sometimes when she needs to. But in this scenario, she knows that this being is protecting these things that is stopping her from getting her dad back, but she knows it's not in um opposition to her due to allegiance to um the main antagonist of of part six which uh is uh white snake for, from what we know so far um and and jolene recognizes that she's like this guy is not like he's just there because he's defending these discs because these discs are tied to like his existence and his being and yeah. like, you know, if, if we take these from him, it's like, what else do I have to live for? You know? And yeah. I thought it was so, I, I thought it was cool that Jolene did not outright kill him. Hermes would say, no, kill that thing. That thing was trying to kill us 10 minutes ago. But Jolene's like, no, like, I'm not, I'm not going to kill it. Like I, it, it, I'm going to let it know that, you know, don't mess with us, you know, don't, don't try and kill us. But, um, we're gonna give these back to you we just wanted you know th this thing we just wanted my, my, my dad's and um and then that's how foo fighters uh realizes oh jolene's a nice person possesses the body of the, the remains of that body that was destroyed and now she's like a walking corpse basically no but, no i know I, I think she was always what do you call it a troll was always that person like that was always foo fighters Oh, you think you think that you think that personality was always a troll, like how she was? No, no, a troll was never. It was never like. Yes, they died, but they died earlier. Like earlier, like when you see a troll go searching out for bodies and stuff, it's that's Foo Fighters, like playing oh. dumb. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Because Foo Fighters is trying to lure them in the water. Right, so. because yeah, she uh, Foo Fighters was already possessing the the other bodies. Right, right, right. Okay. and she want and Foo Fighters wanted to make them fight with each other so of course she was like the most obvious person that's off the most obvious person and then everyone starts fighting with each other which right. then it turns out everyone is just food fight food fighters at a Every certain point <laughs> everyone's food fighters i loved it um but uh what do you got i, I think food fighters because it was more towards the end like the last third of mm. of this part um do you guys like have any strong opinions on her do you want to see more of her like i I personally love the game of catch that she played with Jolene. That was <clears throat> that was the most intense game of catch uh, <laughs> in, I've ever seen in any medium. But um, like, what, what what do you guys think of Foo Fighters? Like, you a fan? You want to see more up there with Hermes? No comment. Like, there's not enough for us to judge, and that's the issue with separating the show into, I guess, those mini parts where we get parts two now. I mean, part one now and part two four to six months i don't know the character 
Like mm-hmm. they haven't done anything. There's the scene with the catch, and then the next scene was um when Jolene was in the courtyard and she was walking in the prison with Hermes, and they pointed at the window. It was like, oh look, she's out there. That was it. Yeah. Right. There's no yeah. build up. There's no character, and that's what makes this part so difficult in a way to like and enjoy. Is because unlike the previous season, we were able to watch them at the rate that we wanted. I know, this, like you mentioned, Dr. Chase, it took us like two to three years to finish part five. Because I remember watching it and then stopping for years and then coming back a couple months ago to watch it. But with this, you give us 12 episodes and there's no build up. There's nothing for those characters. So people that read the manga, they're hyped because they realize, oh, that character was adapted really well. But people like you and I who do not read the manga, we just like to watch it. In a way, it's a bad part. Because mm-hmm. none of the characters got any time to shine. It's just kind of just like, okay, like, come on, you introduce those characters. But even the other two characters that are later introduced that help Jolene when she goes into the courtyard, or three other characters, I don't, I can't tell you their name. I can't tell you their ability. Mm-hmm. I can tell what their position are. Like, what was the point of introducing those characters if you're not going to do anything with them in part one? And like you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, I would have loved if it ended with um, the, the way Josuke, uh, Jotaro, uh, when we thought he was dead, mm. that would have been good. And if part two was a little bit longer, and that in part two they give us time. Okay, you're the new characters. They build them up. Instead, is they pass the characters in front of us and say, "Oh wait, I didn't even have the time to look," but they took them away. So, mm. I I, it, I do. Different. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do agree that it's it kind of it kind of does suck like that, and that's the trouble with having part one and part two. Like if it were coming out week to week, it'd be a lot different. Um, because right. then you can see it week and week and week, and then you see these characters grow on you, you know, with time. Um, and it, it does feel weird for JoJo to just have one part one and then part two. But like, I uh, what do you call it? I think like they they did a smart thing and that they introduced these characters so that because when like when part two comes, the when once it the like and um, once the plot starts like really getting into like the the end game stuff. It really is like, you know, you're, I think you're going to be a little bit more grateful looking back and being like, thank God we got all these like, introductions in part one because you have, you know, Foo Fighters introduction and you know, like at least some of their personality and like some of the things that they can do. And then Hermes and then some of the things that she can do. And then you have the little boy, which like, they mentioned his, right. yeah, they mentioned his abilities, but like nothing, like I think they set up a lot of things that will get explained in part two. You know what I mean? Right. So I think I think it's just the trouble with having part one and part two. Once part two happens and we see everything, then I think it's going to be a lot easier for us to look back and be like, oh, I'm glad they did it in part one. It just kind of sucks that we're only, you know, we're getting so much of it. And we um, with Jojo, we want everything right now. Right. You know, right. Um, or at least like a week to week where we can at least pace ourselves with the amount of information we get. It's just is is that's the trouble with with these releases, right? No, I I agree. I think the optimism in me wants to think that, um, you know, maybe because this was twelve episodes, maybe they would pace it out as twelve weeks from when the episode dropped. They'll release the second part. So like, what twelve weeks is like uh, three months? Three months. Maybe in three no. months we'll get a drop of the second uh, second half. So I'm like, okay, so you just binge. If you want to, you could watch each of them weekly up until they potentially release it. But that's assuming they even do it like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I definitely want to see more of these characters. It's a good foundation for how they laid them out. I'm I'm interested. It's not like they pushed me away from them. Um, uh, aside from those two, I mean, there's Emporio. Emporio's interesting. I don't really know too much about him to really, you know, be into the character yet. Emporio's a little boy with the baseball. Um, yeah. uh, weather Report. I do like Weather Report, though. I do yeah, like his weather. power is cool. He, yeah. His power is cool, but what do you call it? Uh, I, I do think, like, he suffers from a lot what Toasty was saying. And uh, this is just a general, like, fault of his character, um, where he's just like a car- like a cardboard cutout. Yeah. And then his 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 sta- he's really there just for his stand ability. He's right. not really doing much else of like character work. Right. You know? I didn't get that vibe. I-, I thought maybe, oh, maybe in the second part he'll grow a little bit. But 
he he was he he served his purpose. He was fine. I was like, okay, I I I, I can get behind him. Um, but I guess the the last bit is the the big reveal of uh, who seemingly I'm assuming this is like the main guy who is behind the strings pulling all this stuff and uh it's the the prison chaplain um who i i don't think the name was dropped in this part but i believe his name is poochie mm -hmm. right no his name was dropped it was, his dropped? Name was dropped okay yeah it was dropped like but very like what do you call it like i think it was dropped by like the guards when he was looking at the voicemails or like oh, the okay. voice recording right and i think it also was dropped uh, during like the confession time with um that one call it? girl the yeah. purple hair character yeah yeah okay i wasn't sure like I, I i was aware i was aware of poochie before part six uh just because you know you look up stuff about jojo afterwards you're like oh does this character ever reappear again and i i, I all i know is that poochie is I guess the villain of part six and and, and mm -hmm. that's where my understanding ended but with this um we realize uh poochie was a uh, new dio way back then and um in a kind of creepy way too because from my understanding poochie was 16 when he met dio and from my understanding of what happened dio and poochie the stuff happened and i'm like bro i <laughs> Iraqi, what's going on here <laughs> um but uh but yeah the, poochie was infatuated with dio um and uh I, I i just thought it was interesting that this is a character that was obsessed with dio but not in the sense that oh i just want to kill these guys to get revenge on dio poochie has an ulterior motive like, yeah, he mm. wants to kill these people that took Dio from him. But at the same time, there's a bigger play right here. And, and, and what is it? He wants to get the Dio's notebook or, or not Dio's notebook. Uh, Joe Toto's memories of Dio's notebook that what what it, it was like a journal of like how to achieve heaven or, or something like in the mortal world, something like that. Um, I thought it was I can't funny. I can't say. Anything oh, yeah. No, no. It's it's like. <laughs> What do you call it again when you find out in part two when it comes out what his plan is you're gonna be like oh what the fuck but i'm just gonna okay okay they do okay. hint at it they do hint at it in this part though like they're i think i think they do more than hint at it they tell you basically what it is but without any context or backstory so like it's it's kind of like just like uh dropped i'm not gonna like mention what it is because right. then you're gonna know what to look for but they do mention it like his plan but just not any context behind it okay okay that, that's fair um I, I at least so far from what i understand i'm invested in what poochie's trying to do because it's it's tied to one of my favorite characters dio i love dio dio's awesome uh, even though he's like a little bit one noted, but I, I deals what got me into Jojo. So I'll, I'll give him that. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Um, Toasty, do you have anything on Poochie? Like any thoughts? Like you, you just need to know more about him. I mean, yeah, I'm just waiting to see what his plans are. Um, again, that's fault of the parts where it's kind of difficult to get invested in characters because we don't know them yet. We mm -hmm. seen just a couple scenes with them. For now, it's still a mystery. So for now, um, it sucks. But I'm not really hyped for this first part. I'm just waiting for part two, and then once part two comes out, then it will allow me to appreciate part one even more because I will understand the little hints and context that they were talking about. But for now, I'm indifferent to this part. It was mm -hmm. enjoyable because it's JoJo, but at the same time, for me, it was underwhelming because. I don't know what the hell's going on and i want to know what's going on but i have to wait four to six months and most likely i'm gonna have to re-watch part one before i watch part two again or watch a recap to remember what happened in the first 12 episodes yeah. which sucks but yeah yeah i will say though that this is probably going to be one of the sections of jojo that is probably going to be easiest to rewatch. Cause the pacing is just so good like like i don't know uh i don't know if it happened for you too but like watching these episodes did the episode just flew by it was like, so was, easy yeah. to watch yeah. this so it and i think that's something they made it really 
not only accessible but also exciting because like even though we don't know everything about these characters yet you're still watching and you're like you're still you, you can't help but get excited because they did the the bat the stand battles really well like really they like did. yeah they really did i and that's something i i want to mention is in contrast to part five at least for me it was part five was still great great stand battles everything but one of my gripes with part five whether it was the translations or the explanations of the powers or maybe it was just the writing from Iraqi's end maybe Iraqi didn't know what he was writing at the time <laughs> but like these stand abilities they got so complicated multiple times in part five I had to rewind certain scenes and be like what does his power do again I because like I just wasn't <laughs> getting it I was not understanding it and it could have been a mix of all those things I mentioned or maybe it was one of them or something I, I just missed Part six, I had zero problem understanding anything of it's, what was happening. I understood all the abilities. Whenever someone made the, the you know, the whole 180 on someone because, oh, but my stand ability is actually doing this now. I'm like, okay, I get it though. I get why you can do that. That makes total sense. I, again, maybe I need to rewatch part five again. Uh, I kind no, of because. binged it all at once, but yeah, it's just, yeah. That's my take yeah. on part five. I never had that problem with part three and four, by the way. So, but no, that's the issue. The author in part five did not really uh, show the abilities that much in the first place. I mean, we have purple A's. I think we saw that ability once. And purple then, A's. <laughs> now we go. God. You have to think about it because we've seen it once. That we've was it. it. Yeah. And 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 and, and, and and to your point, Toasty, um, purple haze could have made part five half the, the runtime yeah. it would have yeah. ended because it would have it would because purple haze would have beaten diavolo like super easily yeah. and that's why Araki wrote him out of the show notice yeah. how he was like ah only he does not go with them because i <laughs> i made something that i can't control so again, a big yeah he just kind of dump his story after that we don't even know what happened to that character so and that was the issue with part five he didn't have the he created something that he did not know how to handle and he just kind of just roll himself into a corner and say damn i'm gonna have to finish this as soon as possible and move on because i made some characters either too weak and other characters too broken there was no balance in part five you were either extremely weak or extremely broken that was it jorno was super broken oh my god like at every single part <laughs> at every yes. single like and then and then emperor crimson and then when journal gets his what do you call it his uh um oh my god rare, i forgot rare. the name jesus uh the requiem. god requiem. 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 requiem yeah yeah he just becomes he just becomes the best stand user ever yeah like yeah. like <laughs> it's very tough it's very tough there was no there was no balancing in that part he was just like oh god i wrote myself here let's let's move on <laughs> and this one the stands feel so much more balanced um, and a lot more, I think a lot more interesting, like, you know what I mean? Like no, no stand is like a hundred percent foolproof, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, and I think that's, I, I, that really ties into like the ending, um, because you'll, as we'll see, there's a lot more steps to this plan, um, because of the limitations of the stands in this part. Right. Right. No, they. Yeah the stands were the stands were done a lot better for sure i think in part yeah. six um but i guess i guess we'll wait and see what uh what's gonna happen that, that's all we can do at this point uh there was like a little bit of a like the end credit scene in, in part six in this one um she uh poochie is asking about uh this thing with dio's bone and i'm like okay well, what's going on with that? You know, what, what does he need that for? <laughs> so I'm I'm excited. I don't know if it's going to be like some resurrection BS. Like I want to resurrect Dio. I, I doubt it, but um, I don't know. You never know. I wasn't expecting a Dio's bone to be anywhere in this part in this story. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think overall we're on the same page. Part six for, for what it is right now is doing a really damn good job. Um, David production, they... They, they just keep hitting it out of the park with jojo man they they know how to adapt this series and to me it's the, it's the definitive way to experience it like I, i've tried reading the manga a couple times and i can appreciate it for what it is 
But if I'm recommending to someone, do you read the manga or the anime? I'm, I'm pointing them into the direction of the anime. Just it, it obviously still read the manga, but the the anime just does so much. The, the colors, the music, um, the the pacing, it's just it's just great uh, overall. Um, oh, and, and the opening, the opening. I I know not everyone is big on anime openings too much, but. It, that one is excellent. This one slaps, yeah. man. This one slaps. I, I I love this one, especially uh, David Production. They always do these different versions of of their openings, where they have the first one, which is you know the, the normal one. Then the second one is like the same thing, but sometimes they'll add sound effects to what's going on. Mm, yeah, the yeah. And then uh, they, I, I can't wait for this because I know it's gonna happen. And once we wrap up part six, he'll do another opening. But then it'll be like the second half of that opening will be tied to the plot of what's going on. So yeah. like like the, the villain will pop in at the last second and be like, ah, it is my story instead. It is not <laughs> Jolie's yeah. or whatever. Um, I think they did that for like the last three parts. Yes, um, they did. Like they did that with Dio when he like stopped time. Yep. And then yep. they did that with um, that whole third. Kira with... Um, um, yeah. Um, Bray, oh my god, which uh, which bite uh, the dust, oh, bite the yeah. dust, yeah, yeah. Um, and what, what's that little kid's name? Uh, which one, um, uh, from part four, yeah, I don't remember his name, but 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 the little boy, right? Yeah, that they had him like, like be just suffering that whole opening, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They, they they did a good job with these openings and i i can't wait um to see what they do um any any final thoughts i i i think we pretty much spoke our mind on everything but uh any you just have to wait simple as that wait. i'm waiting all right all and right. i promise that wait will will pay off toasted that i'm not just hyping it up just because what do you call it uh you know i'm just a big fanboy of this part the the ending really hits it out of the park i think is it Damn. confirmed that part two is gonna be ending it or they're not gonna have a part three like is that from confirmed? the from the current pace it seems that part two might end it because like okay. the way that they're pacing it it seems like it seems that part two might end it I, I'll, I'll be surprised if they do a part three because like current i think we're like halfway through part six in the manga like based on chapters and stuff okay Okay. All right. That's that's not bad. Um, I guess we'll we'll round off this pod with part two once it drops. Uh, we'll, we'll probably recap what we went over <laughs> in this one before we yeah. watch it, and uh, we'll see where it goes. So far, Stone Ocean slapping hard. I love it so far. Hopefully, the ending and everything, as Nino mentioned, it it, it just wraps up perfectly, and I'm left satisfied with. Uh, hopefully, hell, maybe I could even rank this above my other previous parts, which right now it's like neck and neck with part two and four. I really like those parts. Um, but maybe part six will beat that. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, all right, guys, uh, let us know what you all think about JoJo Stone Ocean. I know we had some friends that asked us, you know, can I watch Stone Ocean without having to watch the previous parts? In a way, yes, you can, you can, but it's that's in like very big quotation marks, very big asterisk in the corner. I would, I would honestly recommend watching the previous parts, and that's not, ju- and, and that's not just for part six. It's any part in general. If, if you ask me, should can I watch part four? Can I watch part three without having to watch? I would tell you no. Go watch. Start the from the beginning. Part. Start yeah. from the beginning. May I understand part one sometimes is a hard sell because I have plenty of friends that are trying to get into JoJo and they're like, oh, this is part one, you know. It's so it? important. It's so important it, for the world because of the is. idea of fate, you know. It, right, yeah. right. Like it's it, like what happens in those parts, it carries through the rest of the series and, and you enjoy those parts because you remember, oh, that's right. This is from part one and the, these characters, these themes and everything. So ro- start watching part one. I promise you, you'll, you'll not regret it. Uh, I'm sure Nino, Toasty as well agree that, you know, start from the beginning. You'll enjoy the series a lot more. It's worth it. It's, it's a big time sink. It's a lot of episodes, <laughs> but you're going to have fun the whole way. Jojo is yeah. just fantastic like that. Um, 
but uh uh, but still, let us know what you guys think. If you did watch part six, did you enjoy it? How does it rank so far amongst your other parts? Are you excited for part two of Stone Ocean? Uh, and when do you think it's going to drop? But uh, if you enjoyed what we had to say today, don't forget to leave us a like, share around the pod uh, with your friends and family, listen to it on long commutes. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Twitter, just we're everywhere. Instagram, just give us, give us a listen. We appreciate it. And we, 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 we like breaking the mold occasionally from like our Marvel fanatics and, uh, you know, our Spider-Man, even though Spider-Man was really good. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, we're, we're, Jojo's great and, uh, give it a watch, give Stone Ocean a watch. But with that, we will wrap things up at the Yonko table. I'm your Yonko host, Dr. Jace Attorney, fellow Supernovas Nino Desplazado and Supernova Toasty, signing off. Strike your JoJo pose and take care, everyone. Peace out. <laughs>